And I drew my revolver and I started to pull the trigger and I focused on his hands and it wasn't a gun, it was his billfold. And I almost killed the man that didn't deserve to die. I almost killed him because he had a billfold in his hands. Um, I drove straight to my sergeant's house and uh, I told him I'm done. It had been almost a year since the shooting. Steve's wife, Marion, also a police officer and an atheist, still marveled that her husband had survived. Over a period of nine months on the graveyard shift as a police officer, it gave me a lot of time to think. You know, the, the bullet that stopped the thickness of a cigarette paper from entering his brain, the bullet in his spine, and he could still walk. And it took me about a year to finally say, well, maybe there is something out there that this isn't coincidence. Marion took her questions to the police chaplain, who told her about Jesus Christ. One night she asked Jesus into her heart, but she didn't tell anyone, not even her husband. He knew me as this strong atheist, and I had started carrying around this New Testament that the chaplain had given all the police officers because I had such a thirst for knowing this God. As Marion's hope and faith in a savior grew, so did Steve's anger and bitterness toward the man who tried to kill him. His name was Mark Farnham, and he had been sentenced to life in prison. At that point in time, the way the sentencing structure uh, was in Wyoming, a life sentence uh, was average of 12 years. Um, and I was very, very bitter about that, that in, 12 years he would be eligible for parole. Steve moved from job to job, still suffering from the physical and psychological wounds from the shooting. Marion saw how miserable her husband was, so she told him how her faith in Jesus had changed her life. She said, you know, uh, I'm a Christian. I was baptized today. And I said, well, I said, that's neat. I said, maybe I ought to be baptized too. Maybe it'll help me. And she said, Wait a minute, there's a little more to it than just being baptized. So we went over to the chaplain's house, and she's praying, and the chaplain is uh, telling me about Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And it made sense to me. I sit there and I thought to myself, you know, if Marion can believe this, it's got to be true. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Steve had a new faith, but he held on to the anger and bitterness. That was something that I was not gonna turn loose. It was too important to me. To turn loose of the anger and bitterness made what happened to me less. And I wasn't about to allow that to happen. Steve couldn't understand why Marion's life had changed and his didn't. I was so miserable, I called the chaplain who had led Marion and I to the Lord and asked him why Marion was so happy and why I was so miserable. And he said to me, have you forgiven the man that shot in? I said, of course I have, and he, he pretty much called me a liar. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I probably even hung up on him. And another, another week or two uh, went by, and I just, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was so, I was so crushed with a, such a heavy burden that I called him back and I said, what do I do? And he said, why don't you write him a letter? Steve did. He told Mark that he had become a Christian and that Jesus had changed his life. It was amazing when I wrote that letter. It was just like God reached down and, and picked this semi-truck and just lifted it off of me. I actually enjoyed opening up the Bible and reading scripture. I felt a need to go to church. I wanted to go to church. It was such an amazing feeling to have that burden gone. The two began exchanging letters, and Steve eventually visited Mark in prison. Is there one particular incident where I can say I truly forgave him? I think it was a growth process for me. Steve and his family visited Mark often and prayed for him for years. Then in 2003, Mark got into a scuffle with another inmate and was put into solitary confinement. There, he cried out to God. Well, in the hole, I said, okay, things aren't working my way. It's a mess, my life's a mess, I need help. So I got down on my hands and knees in the hole there and I prayed and I knew at that moment that uh, Christ had come into my life and things would be different. Okay, it's good to see you. God, it's good to see you, buddy. Forgiveness is, is a choice, it's a conscious choice and 
As a Christian, I, I say I believe in Jesus and I, and I believe in the things that he teaches, but uh, I'm not willing to forgive the man who shot me. Jesus forgave me and I, it was my sins that put him on the cross. It was only by the grace of God that I was saved and that Steve was saved because I didn't want anything to do with God. I didn't believe in him, did not want to have anything to do with him, preferred his name not even mentioned. And it took something as traumatic as being shot five times to wake us up. Don't wait to be waken up by something that is that traumatic. He's touching everyone on the shoulder to try to recognize that touch.